Hey Siri, what's on the calendar for today? Here's your appointment. All day today, TEDx. Now, to anyone unfamiliar to the world of skiing and snowboarding, today is going to be an epic powder day. It's one of the best days for any snowboarder or skier to be had. As you carve down the mountain, it feels as if you're cutting down through butter with almost weightless resistance. It is one of the best days for any snowboarder to be had, except this was not one of those best days. Instead, it was one of the worst days of my life. You are going to die. As these words ushered their way into my mind and reality had began to set in, today may well be my very last. For you see, I had gotten lost in the Japanese Alps of Hukuba, Japan. And I had gotten lost in a region that you're not supposed to be. And I was faced with an impossible mission that day. For I had made every wrong decision in that book. I had ventured out into the backcountry by myself. I had brought little to no food and no water with me. And lastly, I didn't tell anyone where I was going. For I had become comfortable and complacent with the 18 years that I have been snowboarding on this planet. I'd been able to go into the unknown quite well, and I had gotten used to it. But today, I made that mistake, and I almost paid the ultimate price. For I was in an area that was impassable. So I had to ascend back up hundreds of meters over two mountain ridges before nightfall. For I would not survive the night because it, the weather was turning on me and I did not have the proper equipment or insulation to bear through the agony hours. So I had two choices that day. As I was hiking up and night started to creep closer and closer for what felt one foot in front of the other every five minutes or so, with every fiber and being in my body screaming out of exhaustion, I had two choices that came across my mind. Firstly, I could give up, I could take a break, I could take a nap, I could hope I could build a snow cave and hunker down to survive the night. But that wasn't an option because reality was I would not survive the night. I would not come home to snuggle with my cats. The girl whom I started seeing, I would not see again. And lastly, and most certainly, my family and friends would never understand the fear and pain that I had gone through. So I couldn't give that to them. No, no, no. I continued moving onward with what seemed to be an impossible mission. And as night began to approach, and it was 8 p.m., I found my way back home. For you see, I'm standing in front of you today. Now, why did I tell you this story? And I told you that story for two reasons. The first being, life is precious. And we're not afforded many second opportunities despite the ordeal of one situation. And secondly, I realized two things about myself that day. I had truly confronted myself and I had revealed to myself my true face. I wanna ask you a simple question and it starts with a very simple idea. It starts by looking inwards towards ourself, being critical and cognizant of our actions. And the question is very easy to remember. Are the choices and actions that I'm making today, will my future self thank me for them later? Now, why am I here today giving a talk? Well, I think I know a thing or two about breaking rules. And I fit well, quite well into that mold. I'm a video game designer. And I have worked with some of the world's largest video game companies and brands. I also make my own video games in my free time. But I'm also a semi-professional snowboarder. And I have traveled the world competing in various contests. And lastly, I'm a UX engineer and product designer with a full stack engineering background. Now, life isn't linear, far from it. Much like in snowboarding, I can choose my own path down the mountain. And sure, a cliff gets in the way, and I have to jump off of it, mostly for fun, or I do my best to avoid it. 
But for the most part, riding down the mountain is smooth sailing because I chose that line. Now, I understand that I can't control the obstacles that get in the way and that I do not control Mother Nature. And so when a surprise comes across my path, I have to adapt. So one question I started to ask myself was, why can we not as easily choose our own paths through life? And what gets in the way from us living a life more dictated on our own terms? And now I recognize and acknowledge that we're not all born equal, that we're not dealt a deck of cards in our favor, and we certainly don't have the ability to neglect responsibilities. And I don't have the blueprint or the magic formula to life's questions, nor do I want that. For see, if I knew how the magic worked, the essence of life would be lost, for I knew how its inner workings functioned. But the one thing that I do know is equal between all of us is that we have 24 hours in the day and we have the capacity to change our thinking from I can't to I can. And in order to do I can, we must first embrace our weaknesses in order to reach our true potential. And that starts by embracing our failures and confronting our fears. And let me tell you something. Failing is okay. And I'm no stranger to failing. In the past three years alone, I had three major operations. I have a metal plate in my arm right here with a pretty nasty scar. But it is a reminder of my hard work and sometimes stupidity. But just because I fall doesn't mean I should stop. I mean, I fall and fail a lot. And I mean, a lot. But there's no better person that understands that failure is a process than the person that possesses the key ingredient known as grit. And grit is one of the hardest things to learn. But it is what sets apart the changers of the world from the non-game changers. And there's no better way to exemplify how to learn grit than someone trying to learn how to do an ollie on a skateboard. For what seems to be one of the most simple maneuvers takes hundreds, sometimes thousands of tries to do the pop and float in the air. But there's no kick flip, and there's no heel flip without first learning and mastering a trick that will take you hundreds and thousands of tries. And while you may be discouraged, failing, 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 grit teaches you that failure is a process and that you, it is okay to fail for some time, maybe your thousandth try, you will land that ollie and you will start from here and go to there. But you can't give up because you need to learn and experience grit for yourself. Now, there's a story that I wanna talk about that embodies grit. And as a person that is a techie, I really love Silicon Valley. And Silicon Valley is home to some of the world's most innovative technology companies on the planet. For it welcomes in failure with open arms. For in Silicon Valley, they understand that failure is a process in order to succeed sometimes. And there's a story that I wanna share with you tonight. In 1984, a ragtag team of developers were told the thing they were passionate about, the thing they were developing, wasn't the smartest thing to go after. That it was almost impossible. That they should focus all their efforts on product A instead of product B. And they embodied the spirit of embracing failure and confronting their fears. And they did that by hanging up a pirate flag in the office they worked in. Because they were going to break all the rules and become the pirates of Silicon Valley. You may have heard of that company, but it is Apple. In 1984, they introduced the home computer, the Macintosh, and it revolutionized the computing industry as we know today. And it is one of the first great stories of entrepreneurship in Silicon Valley, given the context that they embraced failure 
and confronted their fears. For they didn't give up despite everyone saying it was impossible what they were going to do. And this is a picture behind me of the team and the pirate flag that they hung up in their office. Now, how do we attain this way of thinking? How do we start to better ourselves for a better life? And well, in the past 26 years of my life, I've spent a lot of time in Japan. In the past three, I've spent a month or more living and snowboarding and working in Japan. I've gotten to know Japan quite well. And there are two stories that I'd like to share with you about how to repair ourselves when times get tough. And these stories have helped me become more zen-like when I find it to be difficult in my life. So I hope these two stories that I share next will help reground and recenter yourself. For I know for a fact that despite how bleak or dark your situation may be, I promise you it won't be that way forever if you enact the initiative to change yourself for the better. For it is no one else's job but yours to make yourself a bit stronger and a bit wiser. And one topic that I want to share with you is called kintsugi. It's a Japanese art form of repairing broken ceramics and pottery. And they take this method of something that's broken and they repair it with gold inlay. For it is not garbage, it is valuable still. It can be fixed. And we can take this analogy and we can apply it to ourselves. For when we're broken, we can pick up all the scattered pieces that lay on the floor and we can repair ourselves with gold because we're nothing less than gold. Despite having a few more scars, we are not ugly, we are still pretty, and we have more stories to tell. But I do know for a fact that if you do not pick yourself up, you'll be left a mess. And lastly, there's a story that I want to share with you. Its lineage can be traced back to the 1700s. It is known as the Six Faces and Three Hearts story in Japan. But over the years, its context has manifested into a more digestible story. And I quite like this story. It's called The Three Faces. And it postulates that we all wear three faces. The first face we wear is the exterior world. The second face that we wear is to our family and friends. And lastly, the third face we rarely wear is our spirit within, is our most vulnerable self, but it is who we truly are. And this face rarely and sometimes never shows itself. And we need to embrace and wear our third face on our sleeve, for it is who we truly are, and it will make us more honest. But how do we obtain wearing our third face? And that requires that we confront and ask ourselves the critical questions. And sometimes that's not enough. We need a pivotal moment that really confronts us, such as getting lost in the Japanese Alps. For it's not weakness to be vulnerable, but rather a signal to our strengths. And as a game designer, I like to view life as one big multiplayer game. Except in this game, there are no respawn points. Why? I don't know. But maybe someday, we'll get to ask the creator who developed this game. But for now, there are hardly any do-overs in this game, let alone second chances. And when our health reaches zero, it's game over. So I ask you to go home tonight to ask yourself three simple questions. First, have you truly confronted yourself? Secondly, are you embracing your weaknesses as your strengths? And lastly, which face do you wear on your sleeve? I wish you the best of success, and I encourage you to let your inner pirate take command so you can set sail to newfound adventures that await you. For you only get to play this game one time. Thank you. <laughs>